Uh, I haven't serviced it. Bad, isn't it? Oh, this is so bad, man. <laughs> how, have you, how have you been daily in this? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, Jack. How are you doing? You are right? Yeah. Good, yeah. Good weekend? It's okay. Lovely. Don't really care. Anyway, behind me is my BMW 330i Touring E46. You may remember from the channel nine months ago, I showed you that I had just bought the car. I showed you all the pros and cons about buying a 140 pound, 172,000 mile 330i Touring. As you can see, I still have the car. I've owned the car for about one year now. So I thought today's episode would be a kind of look at what it's like living with a car like this, because I know all about it. What I know more about though, is rust. Speaking of which, the rust is still there. It magically hasn't disappeared, such as the uh, UK climate. It rains, there's salt on the road. As you can see, uh, yeah, it's just, it's disgusting. At the end of the episode nine months ago, I said, oh, I'm gonna cut out the arches and put flared arches on and then, 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 dreamer. Why bother? Why bother? 140 pounds, Jack, would you bother? No, I wouldn't. You wouldn't bother, so I'm just leaving it. It's still there, and what's more, it passed the MOT with flying colours, so even though it looks ugly, and that little bit's that come off like that, what do you do that? It doesn't really matter. What's happened over here, Alex? What's that? Oh, the kidney grill. I, um, I had to brake hard, and then the kidney grill fell out. I just heard a <laughs> and then I picked it up from the road. The kidney grill actually lives in the boot, because um, kidneys further down around here, not in the front. You don't have your kidneys in your head, do you? As you can see, I don't really bother cleaning it. I cleaned it once because I wanted to know what it was like to be a detailer. Got really bored, so I haven't done it again. I have a dog, I'll chuck her in the back. Don't know if you can see, Jack, can you focus on the window here? But you can see where she puts her head and her nose and all of these marks here are from her soggy nose when she sees other dogs and she's like. Ugh. I've literally just made out with my own dog. One mod that I've done since the last video is fit the tow bar. The reason I fitted the tow bar is because I just think if anyone's going to rear end me, they're going to come off a lot worse and I should probably just be able to move on without any damage. A bit harsh on the other people because I will completely destroy their radiator and everything else, but... You could tie them to a garage if you do that to them. Could do that, but I wouldn't because they crashed into me. Don't deserve it. Still got an engine. I haven't serviced it. Bad, isn't it? Not once. Not once. Do you know what? I bought the oil, I bought the filter, but the filter's in my glove compartment and I've just been topping up the oil. That's oh. all like changing it gradually though, isn't it? Yeah, really gradually. One of the things I mentioned nine months ago is that I thought that the Vanos was on its way out. Well, guess what? Still going, still fine. Uh, engine pulls like a train. One negative is that I'm getting a bit of oil weep at the back of the rocker cover, so sometimes on the, after a long journey, I can smell kind of burnt, unused oil. It's quite unpleasant, deeply unpleasant in fact, but yeah, this is probably the first time I've lifted the bonnet in quite a while. I am a car guy though. Inside the E46, the seats are still lovely. I nicked those from the 330 diesel touring track weapon that you will be seeing now. They're really hardy, really comfortable. The steering wheel still looks new. The gear knob still looks new. I've still got the same lights on the dashboard. The engine lights, brake warning light, and also the boot open light, but the boot isn't open, so there's something there. I don't have crazy amount of OCD, so it doesn't really bother me, but I'm sure many people who have a car with those kind of lights, they would get those sorted out, but it's been super reliable. The only thing I have done is change the thermostat that was maybe three months in, that cost me 27 pounds because the car was running cold. But since then, I have literally done nothing to it. Running costs, I have been getting on the motorway about 42, 43 MPG. Jack, what do you want to know about the car? Just like the, the level of neglect is unreal. Yeah, yeah, I've really not, not given this any love. But it's one of those things, isn't it? If I start giving it love, that's when other stuff will start breaking. How much would you pay for this car, Jack? I know about it now. I know you've been leaving it alone, you, not doing anything. If you didn't know about it? 130 quid. Shut up. So I was clearing out my shed yesterday and I found the service booklet and also a whole stack of receipts. Now let's start with the service history because it's very impressive. Interestingly, this car originated in Germany, but from Autohaus Hinsmann. So this is from a German dealership. So whoever bought the car, 
probably would have been an English guy living in Germany, got it ordered in right-hand drive and then took it back home. Let's have a quick look at the server's history, shall we? We've got 15,000 miles and then 29, 44, 57, 70, 99, and it goes all the way to 162,000 miles. So this car has been extremely, extremely well looked after. Now where it gets really interesting is in this folder here. This is a folder of all of this car's MOT test, test certificates. Also, receipts of work that's been done. And when I say it's extensive, trust me, the original bill of sale, this car cost 71,000 Deutschmark. This was before the Euro was introduced. So this car knew retail with all the options was 33,000 pounds. Every single invoice for every little thing that's been done to this car, ranging from about 10 pounds to 975 pounds. Now, Jack and I just got the calculator out. The total of work that's been done to this car since 2003 is, drum roll please, was it 10,800 and something pounds? So a third of this car's value or new price has been spent on keeping it on the road. That's mental. As for me, I spent 27 pounds on it, on a thermostat in one year. Not bad going, is it? I haven't even spent any money on tires. Really? Yeah. And you've done nothing, have you? I've done nothing. Do you know what? When I changed the thermostat, I, uh, I took all the coolant out and I reused it. Oh my word. Yeah. Should we go for a drive? Let's do it. All right. That is smooth. Sounds like it doesn't need a service. Yeah, I think you're right. I'll give it another year. One thing that I've remembered that's the bane of my life in this car is the uh, steering wheel column bearing at the top is on its way out. So every time you turn the steering wheel, can you can you hear that? Yeah. And it means that when you turn a corner, you know you can usually just let go of the steering wheel and it will recenter. This doesn't recenter, so every time I turn a corner, I have to go like a granny. Still sounds good, still revs nicely. I really do enjoy driving this car. It's not a car that you drive quickly. I find that I knock it into fourth and fifth gear really early and then just cruise. You can do 30 miles an hour in fifth gear and still pull away. That's why my fuel economy is so good because I drive out everywhere in fifth. There are no knocks from the suspension still, so that's all good. I mean, you'd expect it to be good after 10,000 pounds has been spent on it. There's nothing really negative in the way this thing drives. The brakes are pretty spongy. I don't have ABS. That's what that warning light is. I found out the other day, the hard way, that I don't have ABS. How did you find out? Let's move on from that. Okay. Let's move on. There's no damage to the car. One person knows. <laughs> but he was all right. It's not a car that gets looks, and it's not a car that gets admired by other car guys. This thing gets looks for all the wrong reasons. It does. Like, how is that still in one piece? Why is he driving so slowly? How can that guy be so handsome and only have one girlfriend? No one thinks that. <laughs> Your girlfriend does. <laughs> oh, the gearbox is also disgusting. The big push in the centre's gone. Do you want to try and get it into third, Jack? Y you did it. That felt quite good. No, it doesn't. <laughs> there was a little something in there. Sometimes you get it into fifth by accident. If I haven't driven this car for a, like a couple of weeks, I'll go first, second, fifth, pretty much without fail. Well, you drive around in fifth anyway, so it doesn't matter, it's, does it? This is so true. Do you drive in the fifth because you have no choice? <laughs> It's such a loyal old thing. And every time I get in it on a long journey, I do worry a little bit about, ah, is this the day and the journey where it's going to die? But every time it makes it there and back. At the minute, you're in it for 140 quid plus that thermostat, 160 quid. You're only ever going to lose 160 quid at the minute. Like if it broke down, you just leave it on the side of the road. And <laughs> off. Just <bust. laughs> So there are a couple of valves in the exhaust and when you boot it, these valves open to give it a sportier tone. I took a pipe and I smashed the valves out with the pipe. I did it with Gareth as well, so. Oh, it's like really, so it really got smashed. Uh, yeah, 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 no, it had a really bad day. <laughs> the worst enema you could ever think of. Yeah, genuinely love this car to bits. Um, I've spent nothing on it and if you're thinking about buying a high mileage car or E46 BMW, 330 or so, I would say as long as the service history is good, you don't need to worry about the engine because they are, really are bulletproof. Just worry about stuff like rust. If you want to keep it for a long time and it is rusty, 
maybe walk away but for me i bought this car completely by accident because someone on instagram messaged me saying bmw is going to part exchange this and give my dad 140 pounds do you want it for 140 pounds so I, I had to say yes and here i am a year later still using it as my daily driver jack do you want to have a go yeah i want to have a go yeah yeah i want to see how shit it is there's Ooh. a lot of wires here be careful all right i got a screen and everything that's you jack welcome to my world that's you jackman <laughs> you jack right you like that don't you Oh, that is horrible. That's rough, isn't it? I don't like this. No, it's horrible. It's really bad. It's been getting progressively worse as well. I don't know what's going to happen when it suggesting goes. Oh, this is so bad, man. How have you, how have you been daily in this? <laughs> the indicator doesn't self-cancel, by the way, which is why it's still going. Why does it not? Yeah, that's broken as well. Look at you. You look You look like you've made it now. Oh, I'm in the hot yeah. seat, aren't I? Literally, you are literally like, in the hot sweating. Seat. Yeah. I've got your sweat on me, mm. got my sweat on me. Yeah, and it's not It's not even a Saturday night. It comes in and then goes and then yeah. comes in again. And... Are we talk about our Saturday night. Do you not find the third gear like horrible? I've not had any issue with it. Maybe all my cars are shit and I'm just used to. Yeah, it must be. Oh, that is really weird having to granny steer it back in to the, the centre. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Get it in second and then just give it, give it a good old. about thirds okay right what are your initial impressions jack this steering is the worst thing ever yeah it's horrible it's not nice but you do get used to it just like being short you get used to that you get used to all the really funny jokes yeah. <laughs> well, let me just adjust this <laughs> not mega fast there's no like kick to it like your gti but it's just really smooth and it just keeps on going it's just a filthy cruiser that you don't yeah. care about would you think it's done 176,000 miles? No, the engine feels all right. Not weak, is it? It's not gutless. No. This must be the cheapest motor you've had out of a car, surely. Yeah, 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 easily. Although I did get my girlfriend a free Fiesta and that lasted about a year. Yeah, struggle to get cheaper than that, wouldn't Yeah, you? that was a horrible car. And on the roof as well, someone had scratched in the word I don't think it was aimed at her. It was aimed at you? Probably. That would make way more sense. Yeah. I'd have had it for 140. Yeah, I'll sell it to you for 450. I don't know about that. 400. How about 120? How about 500? How about 110? Is that squeak the wheel? Oh, what's going on there? <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> Indicator. Yeah. There's a lot of things to think about. There is a lot. It's like driving an antique, I'm trying to work it out. Why is everything so manual? <laughs> if you break it, you buy it, by the way. I think I can afford it. So score out of 10 then, Jack, for one year motoring? A solid eight. The rust is a bit much. Yeah. But if it turned, Without that crunch, yeah. it can't be at least an A and a half. Ooh. I hope you guys are as impressed as Jack is. So there you go then guys, a brief overview of what it's like living with a car like this for one year. Like I said, I paid £140 for it, 176,000 miles on the clock. Uh, it owes me absolutely nothing except for £27 for a thermostat. I love daily driving it. Recycle old cars, don't be afraid of buying them. Experience them because you will not be displeased. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please click subscribe. It would mean a lot to us. And you can check out more videos by clicking this link down here. I'm now gonna wrestle with the steering and go home. Adieu.